Today, we're going to talk about the top four open field pairs for cavalry in May of 2021. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming, and this video has been sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. Earlier this year, we put out a list showcasing the very best cavalry commander pairs, and then Yadviga and XY hit the board, and these two commanders shook things up. So in this video, we're first going to walk through the honorable mentions, which commanders are really great when paired together, but not good enough to be in the top four. And then we'll get into our top four list. And during our top four list, by the way, we're going to share with you the very best builds for those commanders so you know exactly how to use them to maximum effectiveness on the battlefield. As always, there are timestamps in the description so you can jump to whatever portion of this you'd like. Let's start, however, with the honorable mention pairings. These are pairings that, honestly... I looked through my battle reports today. I cast a lot of Ark of Osiris League matches. And yes, the first Ark of Osiris League top 32 matches have happened. And these pairs were still all over the place. So I don't want you to get any ideas here that honorable mention pairs are bad. They're great. They're just not the top four, okay? So I'm giving you the top four so you can angle for it. The honorable mentions, however include Saladin Esong as a starting point. Look, early on, I'm going to recommend that you expertise Esong. And if you want to be going in on calves, Saladin is one of the first commanders you'll get in the Mightiest Governor for your kingdom. So yes, Saladin with Esong is a pretty natural pair to invest in very early. And Saladin has a lot of longevity as a top tier commander. So Saladin Esong is a very solid starting point for an amazing Cav March, and you can graduate from it. One other honorable mention, Saladin pairing, is going to be to use Takeda as the secondary. The thing that I love about this is that Takeda really wants a Rage Engine. That's because not only does his active skill, of course, depend on Rage, but his third skill is based on how often you're using your active skill, and his expertise skill is enhancing the effects you get when you use your active skill. So, yes, this is a commander that wanted a range engine. The Saladin delivers that in the form of the support tree. It's a great pair. There's a lot of tankiness. There's a lot of healing. There's a lot of skill damage taken reduction. But you're going to be missing area of effect damage. So it's just an honorable mention. On the topic of pairs that are really strong, I'd use Takeda, also in the honorable mention category, is going to be... Attila Takeda. And look, this is a great march. Don't get me wrong. If you want really efficient trades, Attila Takeda is very good. But I want to be really clear that these are open field pairings for cavalry, okay? Big brawls, big fights where you've got a ton of marches all on the field, like a big Ark of Osiris battle. These are the marches that I think are going to be the very best. I don't think Attila excels in those situations. For really big brawl situations in KVK. Attila Takeda, he's he's great. He'll do work. But I really want some AoE damage. Things that support the whole group, your other marches, and so on. Okay? Now, if you're in small ball battling this or that, you know, a march here, a march there. Yeah, Attila Takeda is very likely to trade positive in a lot of those situations. He gets an honorable mention. And as I said, there are a lot of players in some winning arc teams that are still using Attila Takeda. It's a good march. Up next, by the way, as an honorable mention, is something that a lot of people speculate about, but is just too glass cannon, okay? And that is going to be XY, Xiang Yu, with Khan's secondary. It's just too squishy. It's a cool idea. You could use it. It's an honorable mention for a reason, right? It's an honorable mention for a reason, but the thing is that Khan slows you even more once you get caught in combat, oh man. I mean, you're just going to get melted. He offers no tankiness. XY has no tankiness. Uh, you're in trouble if you use this pairing. You'll do some serious work. So in Ark of Osiris, you could consider it, but it just gets the honorable mention. I still think it's solid, but not top tier. So let's now get to those top tier marches. 
the marches that I think were the very best of the best for calves. And I did consult some calf people before making this video. There are many more I actually, w you know, would consult uh, about calf stuff, but, you know, limited time. The commander pairing that I would put at number four includes a commander I personally wish I could have invested in, but I haven't yet. And that is Chandragupta primary with William secondary. Chandragupta is very underestimated. The reason that he's underestimated is right over here. He reduces the health and the defense of the target. This is a stacking debuff. It happens just from him doing attacks onto the target. There's a 50% chance. People are so excited, so excited about the accessories that reduce the health and defense of the target. That's Mora's web and the dagger. And for some reason, they just don't draw the connection with this being a better version of those debuffs right over here on Shamdagutta. The other thing I'll mention is that he is going to boost your damage by 40% for three seconds. So if you use him as the primary, which I'm advocating in this combo, then boom, your secondary commander, when they use their active skill, they've got the 40% damage boost. It's really good. Now, William, on the other hand, this commander is just obviously a beast. And I don't think he should ever be the primary. I have experimented with that. There are zero situations where I found that like, oh yeah, William primary is the way to go. We even, for a time, were using like William Esong and Canyon because yeah, we... Anyways, don't do it. It doesn't work. You need the rage engine in front of him. Chandra William delivers that. It's a great pair. William is a cav commander that I love because not only does he have AoE, which is very, very rare for cav commanders, but if you're hitting multiple targets, which you will in these big brawls, he's giving everybody rage. It's a big deal. He's also giving defense. That's a big deal too. Cavs really need the tankiness. Chandra Gupta, I believe, has some health and he's going to give some defense. Really solid. Love the pairing. I think it works well. On the topic of talents for this pairing, by the way, Khan has the same talent trees. So I'm going to show them over here, even though I know it's not on Chandra Gupta. This is one build that is a all-in rage build. You're going to see me reference this a couple of times, okay? And because William is helping generate rage, and the more frequently you use your active skill, the more frequently you will generate more rage, I think going all-in on the rage plan is really the way to go. You could go with a cav-focused build with a little bit of points in this rage restoration. You're basically missing this one key thing, feral nature, okay, giving you extra rage, and there's just a 10% chance it'll happen, but it's 100 rage, reducing your skill cycle by a turn. I think it's a good talent. I would personally use it with the Chandra Gupta William. If you weren't going to, it would be because you think you're going to be in shorter fights that are going to either end quickly with you walking away, them walking away, or their march getting smashed, and it's unlikely it will be the march being smashed, right? So I think stick with this build over here. It's the way to go. You're reducing your skill damage taken as well, which is kind of a big deal. There are three points of flex over here that I just think with the number of archers that are showing up in the field, yeah, being able to do some extra damage to archers is a great pick. But now let's go to our number three choice. And I told you that Saladin was good. In fact, I told you that Saladin William was one of my favorite pairs in the game. Saladin William clocks in at number three. This pairing brings so much more tankiness in front of that William. Because William, people see that, they are going to focus him down when they see that there's a William. And Saladin William is so popular now that people even will try to just take out the Saladin William. They just gun for it because it's just so strong. Saladin is reducing your counterattack damage taken and your skill damage taken, which works very well for these big brawls where you're taking some AoE damage. You also aren't dishing out the AoE damage, but you've got such a good rage engine. Such a good rage engine for the William that works really well. You've got the utility of the healing debuff. You also have the march speed reduction on the Saladin. And one of the most remarkable things about this pairing is that if you use both of these commanders at 5551, that is maxing the first three skills and only one point in the last skill, you're still going to have a really good march with a 5551 five, five, Saladin, 5551 five, five, William. 
very low sculpture investment to get very strong effectiveness. As far as talents for your salad in here, this is a build I have enjoyed, although I question whether or not I should go and get Undying Fury for the extra rage gen here. I've opted in this instance to get Buckler Shield, reducing the counterattack damage taken, which is really good if you think you're going to do a lot of damage to folks and you're not going to get focused. I think the reality is that you are going to get focused with this pairing. And in some ways, it would be really nice if we had enough points to be able to go all the way over here to emergency protection. Man, that would have been nice. The, the extra skill damage taken, you just get so melted. People know to focus Saladins now, and that's how good this combo is. It's the must-answer threat that everybody is addressing. So yes, it's good. And the more people from your alliance that bring it, the less likely that you're the one Saladin William that gets focused, because there's so many others that apply that amazing effect to the battlefield. So yes, I can recommend this march very, very highly. And I have a lot of experience with this. This is really the, the build I would go with. Let's go, however to our number two pairing. This is where things got really spicy, because you may remember, I thought Salad and William was the best before. So, whoa, I mean, he's been displaced as the champion. And the recommendation I've got for the number two field pairing, and this is based on what we've been watching in Ark of Osiris, and also their effectiveness together, is XY primary with a Chandra Gupta secondary. Now, this is a phenomenal march. XY, the only Cav Commander with an AoE debuff and AoE damage. Really exceptional damage that you deal in the field. He's a little bit of a glass cannon, but you pair him with Chandra Gupta, who gives a little bit of health, and you're giving him just a little bit more sustain. Also, this debuff is insane. So the two of them together are just shredding marches on the field. But there's more. If you can get the Rage Gen really through the roof on your Xiang Yu, okay. So this is where the magic happens. Because if you can go with your skill cycle fast enough, this ability is going to be activated, okay? And it gives you 40% more damage. So the way this will work is XY does the active skill. There's a second of downtime. Chandra Gupta does his active skill. Then for the next three turns you have a 40% damage boost, okay? So that's a fourth turn, a fifth turn. If you can generate enough rage so that by the sixth turn, you're using the XY active skill again, he's going to have that 40% damage boost, and that is amazing. XY already reduces the rage requirement by 100 on his active skill, then by another 50 over here. With like a Horn of Fury and a William somewhere on the battlefield, maybe buffing your march. Oh, man. Uh, or you could have Trajan doing it. Or you could have Joan of Arc buffing. If you have that situation, that is just going to be a lot of damage and a lot of debuffing and a little bit of tankiness to give XY just a, just a little bit more survivability, okay? Now, I would go and talk about talents, but I want to show you the number one pairing, which is also an XY-led pair. So we'll look at those talents together. So for the number one and number two pair, you would use the same talents here. And that secondary that seems to be the most popular right now is using William as the secondary to XY. You do get a little bit of tankiness out of the William. He is going to buff your defense, but for the most part, this pairing is all about damage. There's a little bit of utility over here, reducing the extra damage from buffs. That's what William's active skill does. That's actually pretty nice. But the two of them together on the field are just a total wrecking ball. It's the march you need to focus first above and beyond the Saladin William because two AoE Cav Commanders is a scary, scary thing. Massive damage, huge amount of mobility, and tough to deal with. Now, if you are going to follow my recommendation of investing in XY as a primary, then I would strongly advise you follow a full Rage Gen build, as I was showing you earlier, right over here. It's even labeled XY build, <laughs> okay? This is the build I would recommend that you use 
as much rage gen as you can possibly get. And that is because the faster that you're casting your active skills, the more opportunity William has to use his active skill and possibly generate more rage and defense for everybody nearby, which means you're using your active skills more, which, well, you see how that trend goes. This build is actually very good for a lot of Cav Commanders in a lot of situations. And, you know, you may be noticing there's a lot of Cav Commanders here I didn't include in this list. If you're in earlier kingdoms, of course, Double C, Minamoto, uh, these are commanders you can and should use if you've got them maxed and they're in a really good position. I saw somebody running around today with XY primary and a Double C secondary, and it's kind of an interesting idea, right? You get a little bit of health regen, that's nice, a little bit of rage gen, I mean, that's the rage engine that XY is talking about. You're even more squishy, reducing your defense over here if you've you got the expertise, but uh, at least you got a little bit of march speed. Yeah, I don't know. It's a strong pairing, and I just wanted to emphasize for a moment that these older Cav commanders, like Khan, like, yes, of course, you still can use them and use them to good effect, but they aren't in the top combos. As far as a cavalry investment order, if that's something you're interested in, I still think regardless of whether or not you want to go Cavs, you've got to start with Esong. From there, these days, it seems like a Saladin's a great investment. And if you're short on sculptures, 5-5-5-1 five, 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 is a great way to save, what is it, 310 or so sculptures for the last skill-ups. It's 80, then 80, then 75, and 75. Uh, that's starting from the last skill-ups and working backwards. So, yeah, about 310 sculptures you're going to save by not expertising. And all you gain is 300 damage factor. A little bit of a healing bo uh, reduction boost. A little bit of a march speed reduction boost. I, obviously, the expertise version is better, but I'm just saying, you could go to a 5551 Saladin and, and use him and get great value. That's not a bad place to start. From there, I think that William has got to be the place to go. William is used in so many of those combos that I was talking about. He's used in actually three of the top four. So that'll put you into a Salad and William combo, which you can use for a very long time. From there, of course, you can figure out how you want to diversify with your cavalry. XY seems like he's going to be one of the best cav commanders to go and invest in. Um, he's in the top combos there. And you could land to an XY William. Then you've got your Saladin you could use with another commander. Maybe you use Salad and Esong. Be a fine choice. But because of the extreme accessibility of that number three combo I was advocating for, the Salad and William, 5551 five, on both of them. William is a Wheel of Fortune commander. It's so easy to get. XY is Wheel of Fortune. So much easier to get. Yeah, that's probably where I would start your journey. The last thing I'll add at the tail end of this video is that it seems like a lot of the top tier cavalry commanders are not very tanky. So if you are going to go in on some outrageously top-tier equipment for cavalry, my recommendation would be to focus on things that give you defense and health because the Cav Commanders already have so much attack and so much punch. The thing you need to do to balance them out to get the most value is to go for that health, to go for that defense. We've made videos in the past talking about how there are diminishing returns on stats. In fact, Gosh, that was like 10 or tw uh, maybe 11 months ago that we made a video showcasing how if you have too much of a stat, you get diminishing returns on the benefits. But without going into all the details here, I'll have a card up in the top in case you'd like to check out that video. I would strongly recommend it just to very briefly walk through some of these selections. And I'm editing this in later because I realize not everybody knows each of these items by their look. We've got the Cav Set Boots and also Cav Set Chest. Both of those have health and gives us the two-piece bonus, which gives health. Then we've got the Ash of the Dawn, and honestly, I think you could use, I think there's epic legs that give a whole bunch of health. Just stick with those. That's I made these before, uh, the, you know, they changed around equipment about a, you know, a year ago now or whatever. So um, probably stick with the epic. And then... For the gloves, the, again, you really can stick with the epic that when special talented gives 4% attack and 4% health, we're really going over the top here with the 8% health. The weapon, Heart of the Saint, really solid. It's got defense. Gives your calves a little bit of survivability. 
And if you wanted to use uh, the set helmet, you could do that. That would give you defense. This is the KVK helmet. It also gives defense. And don't mind the lack of accessories. Those are floating around other places right now. Just cool from the future here as I edit this video, I realized I didn't really talk about the role of Yadviga, which for open field pairings is fairly minimal. Look, she does have some march speed. She's got a little bit of tankiness. She does have the potential to boost your damage. And, you know, you could use her maybe as a secondary, generate so much rage that by the time the primary commander is going to do their active skill, you still have this damage buff. But she's not really doing anything exceptional in the open field, with the exception, perhaps, of the role of being an arc carrier. I'm not saying she's bad in the open field. I'm saying... She doesn't bring some of the key elements that I want to see for big open field brawls. She doesn't bring AoE damage. She doesn't bring a ton of tankiness or utility in a way that we aren't already getting from other commanders. Yes, I think she'd be, she could be a cool arc carrier, okay? Yes, I get that a mobility primary commander might be good for running around and killing gatherers. And yes, I get that she might be a good garrison commander, but that's not what we're talking about in this video. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, throw a like on here, and consider subscribing for those daily Rise of Kingdoms videos designed to help you get value and smash your enemies. And although, okay, we didn't post a video here yesterday because we cast twice on the official Rise of Kingdoms channel for the Ark of Osiris League, you generally can expect that pretty much every day there'll be something good cooking up. And if you've got any ideas for videos that you'd like to see, let me know down below in the comments or if there are some other Cav pairs that we should have talked about but didn't. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.